Hello everyone, welcome back to Clinical Psychology Community UK. My name is Holly and for the last four weeks I have uh, had my induction period as a trainee clinical psychologist on a course in the UK. Um, so this video really came from, I put a call out on Instagram um, for content that you wanted to see and the biggest share of the vote was for information about the induction onto the course um, and some general reflections. So that is what I'm going to cover. I'm going to cover kind of how I felt before the, before the course started, what the first day was like and what the first week was like. But to subscribe and follow us on the socials, it makes it makes a massive difference and I hugely appreciate it. Um, so that'd be great. I'll make sure I pop the links down below. So for a little bit of context, I am at the end of our month long induction teaching block um, into the course. So uh, that's basically for the last four weeks has been kind of Monday to Friday, nine to five um, teaching, which is a lot. Let's start with before the course then. So a bit of background. Um, I was incredibly nervous before the course started. It kind of felt like it crept up on me and I didn't really feel prepared. Um, I was also really tired because for the three weeks before training, I'd been renovating a house with my fiance, which is amazing, so grateful for it. But I was absolutely exhausted, like physically exhausted, mentally, it was absolutely exhausting. Um, so it probably clouded how I was feeling. <laughs> So when I talk about anxiety and all the other things that I was feeling, bear in mind that they're probably a bit heightened because I was just the most exhausted I've ever been in my life. Um, so as well, before the course, I deliberately didn't kind of prepare. Um, I didn't do any reading before training. I, you know, I, I wanted to enjoy my time where I didn't have to do much reading. Um, so. Uh, you know, firstly, I didn't have much time, but also I knew that the next three years were all about learning. Um, and that the time before was for me to try and relax and enjoy my life without uh, lots of pressures. So on the first day, we uh, went to sort of nearby our teaching location, obviously very early, um, because we wanted to be able to ha have a nice relaxing coffee, which kind of turned into a <sighs> kind of coffee um, in a coffee shop and then uh, it was time to go to our teaching venue so it was so lovely because the whole cohort was there apart from someone that had to be at home because of um, isolating due to Covid but everyone else was there face to face um, and it began with an introduction from our course director uh, who kind of introduced us to all the staff and, and, and things like that and the the opening of their speech was the competition is over you're all here to learn you're all brilliant and I will only say this once, you're all supposed to be here. Which I think just made the room go, <sighs> like it certainly made me relax. I was so much more relaxed after, after they said that. And I think I kind of settled into the whole world of, oh hi, my name's Holly, yeah, yeah, I, you know, it's great to be here, I'm really excited. And oh, how many times did you apply? And oh yeah, wasn't the interview hard? Because you haven't spoken to anyone about the interview. You know, you don't talk to anyone about it, apart from your friends and family, but you don't talk to anyone who kind of understands it. So on the first day, I had a lot of conversations about, oh my God, talk, let's talk about the interview because you haven't been able to. So the course had organized quite a lot of time for us to be able to get to know each other because they didn't know how much face-to-face -face we were gonna get, but obviously because of um, the COVID situation. So they wanted us to make sure that we had plenty of time together. Um, and they had sessions kind of introducing us um, to each other and a few little exercises and things like that um, and the day finished at four o'clock where they sent us to spend time together. Uh, obviously we opted for a pub setting to do that uh, so that was really nice just going for a nice drink with, with people. And then the first day was over like it was so, suddenly I am actually a trainee and you get given your name badge with which says trainee clinical psychologist on it it's all just a bit mind-blowing um, and I remember that day thinking, yeah, I remember this and I'll take in all this information and I can't remember anything else really from that day apart, like that was said to us in any of the talks apart from the competition's over, you're all supposed to be here. The rest of the first week, so we're fairly admin heavy because there's quite a lot of things to learn and, you know, orientations to the course, to the university, to the NHS trust that you're working for and they all have kind of different systems of doing things and it's it's a lot of information and these are systems that you will need to be able to use. But on day three we of the first week, we spent it kind of being introduced to people with experience and how they are involved in the course. 
Camille's got to do a bit of group work with that, which was really great. Um, the next day we looked at history of clinical psychology and covered kind of the research demands on the course. Um, and then day five was uh, of that week was um, looking at common mental health issues. Reflections on the first week, it was emotional. It was a really big mix of emotions. And I will come to this at the end when I kind of do some general reflections. But in the first week, I was really excited. I was really nervous. I was highly anxious. You know, it wasn't just, I was feeling a little bit of each thing. I was feeling the full weight of these emotions. Um, imposter syndrome reared its lovely little head and just said, are you sure you're good enough? So that's, uh, that's a fun thing to try and manage. Um, lots of social anxiety, because it's uh, quite a lot of people face-to-face -face, when you've been working at home on your own pretty much for the last 18 months it's a lot to take in along with all the other stuff that you've got to take in and, and deal with it's, it's a lot um, I do remember feeling really satisfied and validated like yes I'm finally here they still want me they've got an ID badge for me which must mean that they haven't made a mistake because you're still looking for someone to say oh my god actually I'm really sorry you're actually the wrong Holly we we wanted someone else can you do you mind leaving and you like your mind just goes there it's weird um, and I also remembered some disbelief in some of the people that we met over this induction block particularly I just I just can't believe that uh, that I'm fortunate enough to be doing it. it I just can't believe it still and I got waves of that but that was the first week so the first week went by really quickly surprisingly quickly um, and we also did, tried to do lots of social things. There was a meal booked, so I think I think it was most of us, apart from maybe two, came to the meal. So that was uh, that was a lot of people, which was really lovely. Get kind of getting to speak to people more. Um, and I, I'm actually really glad that we had that time now because you know now we're settling down into going into placement and only having teaching two days a week. It's really nice that we've been able to get to know each other well. The rest of the induction block, um, I'll, I'll kind of breeze past this. Uh, so week two was our CBT introduction, um, kind of getting everyone up to the same sort of basic understanding of CBT. And it included a lot of role plays. The role plays were initially absolutely terrifying. Uh, I, I mean, f fully on the brink of an anxiety attack kind of situation. Like it was absolutely terrifying, but actually, as much as I hate to admit it, they're a really effective way of learning. Um, you learn really quickly practicing with everyone and actually everyone's in the same boat. You know, everyone's really supportive in my experience. Um, and the course staff, because it was online, so the course staff would kind of pop in and out of breakout rooms and watch you role playing as a therapist or as a client and give you feedback, which was always so supportive and lovely. And I feel like I've learned way more about CBT that week than I did in any other job or any other teaching that I've ever had. It was it was really helpful. But I just want to say as well, if you are listening to this going, oh my God, the idea of role plays, like I'll never be able to do it. Oh my God, I'm gonna give up on training because I'm never gonna do it. Oh no, I'm just I'm not gonna apply because I can't do role plays. I get it, like I really get it, but you will be able to do it. Just what I kept trying to focus on is everyone's in the same boat, it'll be okay, just take deep breaths. And everyone's just as nervous, typically. And also, over the next three years, we're gonna be doing role plays. We're gonna be doing role plays, we're gonna be filming ourselves, doing actual therapy. It's a lot, so you, you will settle into it, surprisingly quickly. Week three was all disorder-specific CBTs. That was incredible. Every single day, I felt like my brain just was full of all this amazing knowledge. Um, but halfway through the week, I just realized, oh, I, why am I putting myself under so much pressure to remember all this information and write all the notes? Like, we've got all the resources given to us. I can write my notes. I don't have to remember it. You know, nobody can remember that much information. They can't. That's why people specialize in things. Um, so once I took that pressure off myself, I think I started to enjoy it a bit more. And then week four, so the last week was um, quite a mix of things, really. So we had some introduction sessions to different kind of modules within training. So older adults, um, dementias, culturally adapted CBT, neuropsychology and cognition introductions, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it was, it was really good. At the end of the induction block, felt exhausted. So much information in your head. Um, but I think it's really important to 
be kind to yourself ultimately this is my, what my course tutor was saying to me just it's okay like it's overwhelming we know that you know just get through it you'll be fine that sounds really not compassionate but it's not it's just an it's an acceptance thing of yes we know this is hard but you're going to be okay it, that's kind of the angle that they come from I've got five kind of main points that I want to talk about. So firstly, it's emotional. I mean, I don't know anyone on the course that hasn't found this emotional in some way. I think as well, I prepared myself for it to be difficult. I didn't know if I really prepared myself for how emotional it was going to be. Um, and I mean emotional as, as in the technical sense, you know, feeling a lot of emotions. But really it's about allowing what you're feeling and saying, it's okay, I can feel this way. It's just a feeling, emotions pass. You know, if you're like the first week, I was truly so overwhelmed. I, I was like, I actually don't know how I'm going to do this and juggle life as well, you know, weddings and all that stuff. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. It's terrifying. But actually, I was really tired. Anyway, um, it is emotional. Um, prepare yourself for that. Secondly, it's really tiring. Like, so tiring. Like we have never, I've never ever sat in lectures for nine till five, Monday to Friday, ever. And it's not like school where, you know, you might have been at school for ages, but you had lots of breaks and you had variety and you're with your mates. Like you're, you're with new people that you don't know. You are taking in a lot of information by amazing people. And it's really cerebral stuff a lot of it or, or just very information heavy and there's, there just gets to a point where your brain is saturated and words just look like squiggles on a page i think radical acceptance is the key like it is tiring but it's brilliant you will get through it just make sure you prioritize looking after yourself and i think that's one of the reasons that knowing how to look after yourself is so important for training had I not had my experience with burnout and my challenges with imposter syndrome and things like that, I don't think I would be feeling how I am now. I feel like I know myself in a way that means I can kind of help myself get through it. Whereas if I'd got on straight after graduating from my undergrad, I don't know anything. Like I would not have been able to do that. Disclaimer, that isn't to say that anyone who does get on straight from undergrad doesn't know how to look after themselves. It, I just personally didn't. I needed a few more years to kind of develop who I was as a person and as a professional. Thirdly, being good enough. And what I mean by this is um, just be good enough to pass. <laughs> I know that's like a really alien thing to lots of us because before training, you're like, right, I've got to get first. I've got to get a master's. I've got to get distinction. I've got to be the best of the best to get in because it's so competitive. And while absolutely that is, you know, there is some of that that's true, some of it, um, I wouldn't say I'm the best of the best necessarily. I think, you know, I think it's difficult to grade it like that. But when you get to training, there's no competition. Like our course director said, there is no competition. I mean, it's really hard to let go of that perfectionism and that drive to, oh my God, I've got to get everything perfect. But it's so much more realistic to just think, okay, well, let's just do it well enough. Let's just do it good enough because in all of my experiences of work i've never done anything perfectly it's always just been okay i think that's good enough like i think that's a, a good piece of work that i've done it, it's not perfect by any stretch so i think that's a really helpful way of reframing what you have to do on training fourthly there is loads and loads of support around um this is a really important one i think the course that i'm on feels really supportive so far um, I've got a really great um, course tutor. You also get given lots of other tutors around. So um, there's, there's lots of support and supervisors and things like that. And I'm really sorry if this comes across as repetitive, but the cohort are amazing. Like, they really are. It's absolutely incredible to be um, in a room with some fantastic people that have got great opinions and experiences. And it's such a, a, a great collection. Um, so I'm, I'm truly really grateful for that. And it also feels like they really want you to decide who you want to be as a clinical psychologist and they help you get there rather than kind of, this is what trainees from this course look like and this is how you will be. There is a, you know, a bit of that. This is what we think a good psychologist is, but that's very kind of foundation level stuff, you know, like an understanding of the evidence base and a promotion of that and, you know, ethical, practice involving co-production and anti-racist practice and all of those things that are hugely important but that should be across all clinical psychologists and then all the stuff 
kind of about therapeutic style and all those things, they really want you to be yourself, which I value a lot. I really appreciate that. And, it, and I also think that helps challenge some of the imposter syndrome stuff. And fifthly, it is hard. Um, people say this all the time and, and it really, truly is. They are not lying. Like it's a lot of things to do over the next three years. I'm really nervous about it. Like I still am. Um, while juggling life, it's a lot. And I think as well, when you are on the course, it, you know, you're grown up. <laughs> There's a lot of grown up things that happen, buying houses, getting married, having children. There's lots of things that happen while the course is happening. But I am really glad that I had applied six times because I had years of working and getting to know who I am as a professional and what works for me, what doesn't work for me. Um, and developing. And I've also got some great experience to build on through training. So when we're in teaching and we're asked for examples or our opinion on things, we can say, oh, well actually this is my experience of risk management in this situation, for example, because of this, this and this. You know, I've got that experience there, which is really helpful. Um, and again, I, for me personally, if I'd got on with a year's worth of experience, for me, only for me, because this is different for lots of people, um, if I'd got on after my first year of experience as a support worker with no supervision from a psychologist, I would have really struggled. However, if I'd got on after my year as an AP, because I'd had supervision with a psychologist and I, I knew who I was a little bit more, then that might have been different. But yeah, hey, we can't go back in time. But basically, I think what I've learned from all of those years is, is about my own well-being and my boundaries. You know, one thing I'm gonna try and do is avoid working on weekends where I can and try and do all the extra bits that I need to do in the evenings. It's just, that's a boundary that I set myself. We'll see how realistic it is. I truly don't know, we'll see. Um, but for now, that's, that's the plan. So it is hard, but it, it, you can put boundaries in place to kind of protect yourself and they might need to be flexible. But moving forwards, I am starting my placement tomorrow as I film, um, in a clinical health psychology setting, which is perfect for me. I'm really excited in clinical health. It's what I really wanted to do. It's why I applied to the course that I'm on. Um, and I'm really, really excited. I am nervous because you kind of feel like you get used to a routine of going in every day and being taught all this stuff. And then you're back to like changing again. <laughs> it's a lot of change and you kind of have to be flexible with it. But yes, yeah, so from tomorrow, um, I'll be on placement three days a week and teaching two days a week. So yeah, it's uh, very exciting. I hope this video has been helpful or interesting. Um, let me know what other content that you want to see. Um, thank you so much for watching. And yeah, please do subscribe and follow us on all the socials that I will link down below. Thank you, bye.